Joe here at ECRM's Beauty Week in Palm Desert, California, and I'm with Shelly from Meyer, who was one of the panelists on the Cantar pre uh, presentation on the intersection of beauty and wellness. So thanks for joining us. Oh, well, thank you for having me. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you brought up during the, com during the uh, panel discussion. Uh, first, can you give us an overview of how the intersection of beauty and wellness works at Meyer? Yeah, um, wellness continues to be a, a, a dominating um, format for us. So when we talk about wellness, it's not only beauty care or over-the-counter medications, it's a whole lifestyle change. So how is she educating herself at home to become more healthier for her family or for herself? Mm -hmm. um, so as we discuss what beauty means within wellness, it's how do we help her understand what the products are how do we educate her at shelf on what they do and how they can fit into her already busy lifestyle? Um, so those are just some of the formats that we continue to look at as, as we find out what wellness means to her, because that's the end result. Gotcha. And as a uh, food retailer, beauty and wellness encompasses food, not just you know uh, makeup, cosmetics, and, and vitamins and supplements. Yes. So the, does that, your education on that, does it include food as well? It does. Um, it, uh, our format uh, at our super center is a little different than, than what you see mm -hmm. in the market. Um, so she's actually already coming in for her food. Mm -hmm. And we always hope that she's coming across the store to get her beauty care yeah. and health products. Um, so when we talk about wellness, it really does start with food. She already has her um, fitness and uh, daily food schedules already planned out. So mm -hmm. it's how do we fit in beauty care into her already busy schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so it does start with food and how do we capture those same ingredients that are helping her um, or capture that same education on the other side of the store mm -hmm. to say that same message on our side. And what kind of education are you doing? Uh, we do a lot of digital, um, a lot of social, um, and we are trying to do more at shelf. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to build some programs that talk more about how health and wellness fit into her already busy schedule, like I said, how does it fit into her food regimen that she has. Um, so really calling out those ingredients and the healthy, clean products that she is looking for is one big thing. So whether it's displays or um, signage in stores or floor graphics that kind of call out what mm -hmm. those special ingredients are that she's looking for, those are the kind of things that we do. Gotcha. Are you finding that consumers a little more educated these days oh, than sure. in the past? She's doing her homework at home, and if she's not, she's taking the time to peruse through the aisle to find out what's new and exciting. Okay. Um, it's and you have to hit her at all fronts, whether it's mm -hmm. digital or at shelf or even in in the in the daily reading that she has, it is standing in line at the grocery at the mm -hmm. checkout line. Um, what kind of message can we tell her that we care about her in all the different fronts and all the different. Um, avenues that she's taking. Gotcha. So this concept of beauty from within, uh, you mentioned during the panel discussion that it was a little bit of a challenge for you guys, uh, especially in terms of placement. Can you give us some more details yes. on that? So our, we have so many different types of shoppers in our mm -hmm. store. Um, if she is just coming in for groceries, how do we get her on the other side to talk about beauty? If she's already knows what she wants because she got that education at home by herself, um, she's looking for that in the store, so she's perusing the aisles. It's we have to, like I said, hit her at all fronts. So it's getting that um, education to her in one destination, mm -hmm. maybe a, a, a beauty wellness destination at store, but also giving her the same um, views and items in the places in the store that she's already shopping. So if it's down the vitamin aisle, she's already there and now she's looking for it. She's yeah. not going over to a different part of the store. Or if she's over in grocery, how do we give her more of the selection there um, to make sure that she's, if she's not coming across, that she can still have that same same assortment in front of her. So you might merchandise some of these beauty with from within products in different areas, yes. of it, not just the beauty. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, what about CBD? I mean, we <laughs> with ECRM, CBD is such a huge topic, and uh, uh, there's a lot of interest. Some people are, you know, testing the water. Some people are diving in. Yes. Where are you guys? We, uh, we are a very conservative family and store. Um, we are a wait-and-see company. Uh, we really want to make sure our consumers are, he are healthy and safe. <laughs> so 
we're really waiting for regulations to come down to say this is the safe way to, to use CBD. Um, that's going to take a while, yep. uh, as, as we all know. Um, but it's really from a supplier perspective, we really want them to do their homework and be able to edu help us educate the customer mm -hmm. on what she's actually purchasing. Um, some of the ways that I'm seeing them do it is, is the QR codes on the items. So she can, once she purchases it or even standing in the store, she can scan that and find out the life of that product. Where did it start? What did it go through? Um, some of the regulations around it that we have seen, um, I don't think are enough. And so yeah. once we get more, then we, we will certainly um, explore those categories. And the vetting process is going to be, I mean, uh, for the ones who are doing it already, they're taking a really deep dive when they're vetting these suppliers. They're making sure they have at least, you know, whatever standards, uh, the manufacturing standards they have right now, they want to make sure they're squared away. Uh, but fortunately, the um, government just had the um, uh, call for comments, and they had it live, I believe, in, okay. on uh, Friday. And so they're going to take that into consideration as they start putting together regulations. Right. So hopefully you'll have something see, soon. See yeah, it's going to come. Okay. It'll be big. Well, last question. Uh, when it comes to supplier relationships, yeah. uh, what is important for suppliers to know if they're looking to do business with you? Uh, it's all about communication. I think that's the that's the first step. Um, so if you have this great product, great innovation that we that you want to show off and, and really sell at the stores, it's about communicating with the buyers about how can we make this happen? How do we make your life easier and how do you make our lives easier? Okay. So it's being open and honest about um, your capabilities, first off. Um, what, where can you ship from? How can you ship? What kind of um, technology do you have to make that easier so that we can get that item on the shelf? And also, once we establish that you're gonna make it on the shelf, it's how are we gonna promote together? Um, so it's, I really leave it up to the vendors and suppliers to really push their brand. You tell me how far you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, we can hopefully make that happen. Okay. Well, thank you for all the information. Yeah, of and thanks again for participating on the panel. No problem. It was great. All right.